Hi, my name is Cindy DeStefano and I'll be doing a brief overview of IPv4 network addressing and troubleshooting. An Internet Protocol Address, or IP address, is a numerical label assigned to each device connected to a network. An Internet Protocol Version 4, or IPv4 address, is represented by any 32-bit notation written in four groups separated by a period. For example, 123.123.123.123. .123 .123 .123. This is a unique address that is different for every device on the network. There are 2 to the 32nd power possible combinations for an IPv4 address equaling more than 4 billion possibilities. An IPv4 address can be represented in two ways, binary notation and data decimal notation. When dealing with either notation, there are a couple of rules to keep in mind. There cannot be more than four sets of numbers. There cannot be any leading zeros, for example, in the I address 123.123.023.123, this would not be a valid address because of the 023 in the middle of the address. Binary and data decimal notation cannot be used congruently. For example, you cannot have 101.0000.123.123.123, even though the beginning binary number equals the same as 123. Binary notation uses all ones and zeros to show each octet. When showing an address in binary notation, there is a simple way to figure out the proper 8-bit binary for each set of numbers. One octet can equal up to 255. This is shown by giving each bit its own number and adding them together to equal the proper number. This is shown as 128, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, and 1. Starting from right to left, each number is doubled until the total 255 can be reached. The example IP address 172.16.5.1 would be written like this in binary 10101100000000000001001 and finally 0000001 For data decimal notation, you simply take the binary notation and add the numbers anywhere there is a 1. In the example from the previous slide, 10101100000000001000001 would be translated by taking the numbers 128, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, and 1 and adding anywhere there is a 1. The first octet, 10101100, would mean adding the numbers 128, 32, 8, and 4 to total 172. This process continues for the rest of the address until all four octets have been converted. IPv4 is broken down into five different classful address classes. Class A is a unicast address used for large networks. The first octets range from 1 to 126. Class B is also unicast addresses used for medium-sized networks. First octets range from 128 to 191. Class C is unicast addresses used for smaller networks. The first octets will range from 192 to 223. Class D are reserved addresses for multicast, and the first octets range from 224 to 239. Class E is reserved for future use, or formally for experimentation, with the first octets ranging from 240 to 255. Classes A, B, and C can be used in conjunction with each other as long as the devices are configured properly. This type of address consists of a net ID and a host ID. A network mask is used to help find the network addresses and the broadcast rate address. The mask is a 32-bit number of contiguous ones on the left followed by contiguous zeros on the right. The number of zeros is equal to the number of host bits. The number of ones is equal to the network and subnet bits combined. This can be written in one of three ways data decimal notation, binary notation, or prefix, which is a slash and then the number. IP addresses can be broken into subnets. Subnets allow for a large address block to be broken down into smaller blocks to accommodate more devices on the network. This is done by borrowing bits from the host and adding a new part in the middle of the address between the network part and the host part known as the subnet part. You must keep in mind that the size of the entire address, 32 bits, cannot be changed. The size of the network part cannot be changed either. Class A has 8 network bits, Class B has 16 network bits, and Class C has 24 network bits. There are two addresses in every range that are reserved for the network address and broadcast address. 
The numerically lowest address in the range is used as the network address. The numerically largest address in the range is used as the broadcast address. Neither of the addresses can be assigned to a device. This needs to be taken into account when determining what size network is needed as it will need to be reduced by two every time. In order to find the network address, you need to know the IP address and the mask. First, you must compare the IP address to the mask. If the mask has a 255 in the octet, the number for the IP address stays the same. If the mask has a zero in the octet, the number for the IP address changes to a zero. If the mask is 255.255.255.0 and the IP address is 172.16.5.1, then the network address would be 172.16.5.0. If there is a number in the two, other than 255 or 0 in the mask, you need to do some math. If your mask is 255.255.255.240 and your IP address is 172.16.5.33, you must first subtract the number from the magic number, which is 256. In this case, you would take 256 minus 240, which equals 16. Then, starting at 0, take multiples of the answer until you reach a number that is lower than or equal to the number of the IP address. In this case, you're trying to be equal to or lower than 33. So you go 0 to 16 to 32. So for this example, the network address would be 172.16.5.32. In order to find the broadcast address, you would again need to compare the mask and the IP address only in binary form. For example, for the IP address 172.16.5.1, and the mask of 255.255.255.0, you would convert into binary notation. <clears throat> For every place there is all ones, the number carries down. For every place there is all zeros in the mask, the binary needs to change to ones. For this example, the broadcast address would come out to be 172.16.5.255, as the first three octets have all ones, and the last octet contains all zeros. If the mask was changed to 255.255.255.240, everywhere there is a zero in the mask binary, there needs to become a one in the IP address binary. So for this example, the last octet for the IP address would change to become 00001111. So this would make the broadcast address be 172.16.5.15. Now I'll briefly go over some troubleshooting techniques that you need to look for when working with IPv4. If there are problems between the host and the default router, you must first check the problems that could be involved with the host's IPv4 settings. <clears throat> there are two main problems to verify when having to troubleshoot the IPv4 settings. First, you must check the host's IPv4. Verify that the settings are correctly configured. These settings can be configured in two main ways, using static configuration and using dynamic host configuration protocol, or DHCP. Using the commands ipconfig or ifconfig will allow you to see these settings. Next, you need to verify the inner network settings. You need to check that the domain name server, or DNS, IP address matches the DNS server address for, used for the internetwork. There could also be a problem with the subnet mask being mismatched. Having mismatched masks between the host and the default router can cause them to calculate a different range of addresses and can lead to problems. While the host may be able to route packets to the default router because it reads the range of addresses correctly, the default router might not be able to send packets back because the host is outside the range of addresses it can see. When it comes to DNS problems, they can be quite obvious. Any ping or traceroute commands will fail when using names, but could still work when using IP addresses if the, <coughs> if the only problem is incorrect settings. Problems with the default router can be caused by incorrect DHCP settings and problems with the router LAN interface and LAN issues. When it comes to incorrect DHCP settings, you need to ensure that for every centralized DHCP server, there is one router on each remote subnet that acts as a DHCP relay agent. It also must have the correct IP helper address with the correct address subcommand on the interface connected to that subnet. To see if there are any connectivity issues between the DHCP relay agent and the DHCP server, you need to use the relay agent's interface's IP address and the server IP address as the source and destination of the packets. LAN problems can be caused when the router LAN, interfa <coughs> LAN interface fails or if there are problems with the LAN itself. You would need to verify that the interface status is up. If it is in an up, up state, then there may be a problem with the LAN itself. This has been a brief overview of IPv4 network addressing and troubleshooting. 
For further information, please refer to the listed websites as they can help you further diagnose the problems with your IPv4 network or your LAN issues. Thank you.